turn around from failure to success, from sickness to health, from shame to glory. Father, let there be divine turnarounds in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Briefly this morning, I'll share a few things with you that will help you. Yesterday, we were in the Leadership Empowerment Summit in, um, with God's servant, and he shared a few striking things, which I feel that is very, very important to us in our own life at this moment. Wisdom from above makes for high flyers. We've been talking about the wisdom of God. It will be important to know what wisdom we will need to sustain quite a number of things in our lives. I mentioned why I was praying with you right now. Please, can you give me Ezekiel? chapter 18, and from verse 21. Ezekiel chapter 18, and from verse 21. Now, everybody read. We are reading to 23. One, two, go. Everybody focus. One, two, go. Okay, no, before we'll read the message translation, but let's finish it, 21 to 23 first, King James. Now, 22, what did he say? Go. Then goes to 23, yes, can we go? Yes, continue. Let me tell your neighbor. God is not counting your past. Our past never counts with God. What counts is where we stand today. Say it consciously. What counts is where we stand today. I want you to hold on to this wisdom. Go to the message version and let's read it. One, two, go. No, they have not finished reading it now. 21, who is that person there? 21, let's read it, one, two, go. Good, 22 now, let's go. You see? 23, yes. Twenty-four. Because of his deflection. <laughs> you see now? Deflection. He deflected. Somebody need to stay where God has put you. 
there were these examples of some individuals. Just take notes. This is just, I just want to drop this for you so that somebody can just go through it. Maybe you need to do a Bible study on it. Solomon loved the Lord, but it was for 20 years. And he derailed 20 years. Solomon, he loved the Lord. 1 Kings chapter 3 and in verse 3, we saw the account of Solomon. He loved the Lord. But sooner like we know it, 1 Kings chapter 9 verse 10. And look at it, it came to pass that 20 years when Solomon had built the two houses of the Lord, he had built houses for the Lord, he had built house of the king. Now verse 24, what is happening? Then, but he said, Pharaoh's daughter came up into the city of David, unto her, in that, and Solomon, he said, had built for her. Then did he build Milo. That was the first time he started building shrines. <laughs> the daughter of Pharaoh came in, beautiful woman. But Solomon could not hold, withhold with that. He started with just the daughter of Pharaoh. Then the sequence of his escapade started. And he did not return. 1 Kings chapter 11. From verse 1 to 3. Can everybody read 1 to go? And verse 2, let's go. Hello, hello, hello. Leave that scripture there. Now look at it. He said, the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall ye come near into you, he said, what? Well, for surely they will turn your heart after their God. Many of you, your heart, God knows. When God says stay away from something, he knows. It's because those things will turn your heart away from God. 20 years. Maybe somebody is 20 years old now. I'm from the day when you were born till this moment, you have enjoyed the help of God. 20 years. Go to verse 3. Yes? Let's go. One to go. What did they do to him? They turned his heart away. And verse 4, continue. And you see, may this not be your story. May this not be your testimony. How many years? How many years? How many years? How many years? Look at Asa, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. Look at Asa. Yes. What did he say there? Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. Yes, can we read it? One, two, go. Now, let's go to verse 8. Go on. Can you imagine this young man renewed the altar? He was very zealous for God. But what happened? Fifteenth year to 35th year, for 35 years afterward, Asa derailed. 35 years he derailed. The question is this, how long are you going to stand? You heard what Dr. Azu just said now. How long are you really going to stand? Look at the issue of Saul. 
the king. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 to 23. What was Saul's reign? Saul reigned for 40 years. Come on, say 40 years. It took for So when you say obedience is better than sacrifice, he has been obeying you know, for 40 years. Then 40 years, he goofed. <laughs> so you now think that should we, the privileged small we now, should we slow down in our obedience to God? We can't afford to. 40 years of consistency, but the turn came. And do you know, God said, I have taken the kingdom from you. I took it from you. All because he listened to the people. 40 years. Can you imagine? Let me tell you. No matter how much God has stayed in Covenant University, God forbid and it will never happen. If the wrong things are done, God will be out of here in no time. That's why we need to be afraid of what we do. We are serving him with fear and trembling. That's why the servant of God, the chancellor, is doing everything that God requires him to do. Not as what he has done before, but what he's doing today. This hour, this minute, is what counts with God. I believe this will teach some people something. Never, let me tell your neighbor, never have an arrival mentality in life. Tell somebody next to you, never have an arrival mentality in life. You know, some of you now, maybe you are even graduating with the first class, thanks be to God. You had a 5 for zero, thanks be to God. Please, what will make you excel the more with a first class result is never have an arrival mentality. Don't believe that, okay, you are just the best and everything is going well. No, never have an arrival mentality. Keep adding the more. Keep doing the better. Keep making being fervent. Your prayers were not just for you to have first class. Your prayers was used to have a first class life. And you still have life to live. Is somebody getting blessed? Uzziah missed it after 52 years. He became a leper. Second Chronicles chapter 26 from verse 3 to 21. How many years? How many years? So somebody who served the interest of God for 52 years and at the end of the day, he ended up dying as a leper because he missed it in 52 years. You won't miss your way. So the question is this, what is the mystery or the wisdom behind consistency in life? Like, what is the wisdom in consistency? Always having the better, the Bible says the path of a just man is as a shining light that shines more and more onto a perfect day. Now, if rain falls today, now how many biological sciences students are here? What do they call rain, falling, evaporation, and rain falling? It goes through uh, the run, the transpiration, and condensation, and all. What do they call it? Water cycle. Our green, uh, our environmental woman here. Abi, Tosi. Very good. You're an environmental person. I think you talk about the green, Abi. What's that your project about? What? Uh, no, what? There's a caption now. Sustainability of the solution. What? What's the name now? You have one caption. What is this? Is this solution? Eh? Solution 17. It's not solution. Yours is not solution 17. Okay. Which one is it? Um, sustainable, sustainable energy. Now, look at it. Now, what is the main crux of sustainable energy? Then let's, let's look at that. No, no, relax yourself. I'm not, you know some of these things that we talk sometimes now. The sustainability, is it not a function of recyclability? Now, that you can put something round about. Now, for example, now, our plastics, they are um, what you call, is it recalcitrant, you call them, in the environment because they are not degradable. So, 
if you keep putting plastics into the earth, you keep destroying things. So what do we do? We must keep making sure that we keep less of plastic things into the earth so that we keep recycling them and it. That's why we are picking pet bottles here and we are recycling it. The bottles we used yesterday, we'll see using next week or next month or next year. Hello? Now, listen. Nature. Now, if you understand that this may just drop for someone and you will never have a dry season in your life. Let me hear a believing amen there. Amen. Understand this and you will always have rainfall of favor, rainfall of increase, rainfall of advancement because the Bible says, if your cloud be full of rain, what will they happen? They empty themselves on the earth. So the cloud is always full. Does everybody agree with me? But what filled the cloud? It was evaporation that came from the earth that filled the cloud. So as believers, we must always walk in that cycle. Your rain fell now in this semester with a 5.0, with a first class GPA. Listen to me. If your rain must fall at the end of Omega, you must refill the cloud again. You know why many suffer dry season or many things nose dive? It's because many filled the cloud in Omega and they didn't feel it in, I mean, in Alpha, they didn't feel it in Omega. They reduced the level of evaporation of prayer, evaporation of wisdom, evaporation of hard work, evaporation of kingdom investment. Everything that they did that brought them to their place, they stopped doing it. They withdrew and things withdrew from them. As long as the earth remains, what you sow, what you evaporate is what falls down over you. What you give to your education is what rains on on you. There is nothing in doing nothing. You didn't do anything. You can't expect anything. It is what you have done that will break, fall back to you. So what do you do? Keep allowing your rain. Young ladies are here. You are making your cloud. Your cloud... Your cloud, many of you are storing up many things, storing up in prayer, storing up in good attitude, storing up. The rain is going to fall. Possibly your rain is going to fall and God gives you a good husband. That's not enough. That's not enough. Many marry a good husband and refuse to keep filling the cloud. It can turn to another thing. You evaporated to get the good husband. You need to keep doing better what you did. To keep a stable home. You did what you did to get a good GPA in 300 level. You need to keep doing what you have done and better to continue the rainfall. You know why many of us suffer drought? It's because what you did in 100 level. Those of you who had 100 level result very good and 200 level bad and all that, or some people who have up and down results. You know what happened? Today, they evaporate and their cloud is full. Next tomorrow, they suffer drought. Next tomorrow, they, they gather up rain again. Next tomorrow, they suffer drought. Do you know why many suffer financial crisis and all? Today, their financial harvest come. Next tomorrow, they finish all the thing. Okay, a farmer who had a bumper harvest of 1,000 tubers of yam and ate everything including the stock of the yam. Does he have anything to sow this farming season? What will happen to him the next farming season? Hunger, because he ate both the fruit, he ate and the seed. Many of you now, your finances are wonderful and it will be more wonderful after your parents now leave you to be cutting money, to be using your own money. You know, most of, most of you are riding your, your parents' finances now. If you don't know how to have kingdom investment, wisdom. I can say this. Ejiro graduated with the first class. Is that not correct? You know what Ejiro shared? He said, the more I worked for God, and the more things worked out for me. Sorry, I have to talk. This my young girl here came to me some few days 
last semester, you know her position. She was afraid of the weight of doing two assignments together. So I told her one word. If God has ordained you, carry the strength. God will enable you. You will be a mother. You will be a career person. You will be a wife. That's a lot of luggage. Learn to begin to carry it now. Ask her a testimony when you see her. She has a dangerous testimony. Because she chose to carry the ark on her shoulder. Why some people are saying, no, it's too much. She carried it. Ejiro said, the more I carried, the more God helped me. God will help you. Every chapel scrubbing, I don't know how when, but for all the time that I was in this school when I came, that little girl will bring resources to power the chapel scrubbing. It's between me, her, and God. But at least I can say it now so that some of people know. She will bring money, money. He will drop it. I say, take it to accountant. I'm not sure that money, I've never, I didn't ask them. It can't be less than 50,000. Every chapel, and we do chapel scrubby every semester. Is that not so? Good. And many does not know. Many didn't know. The back end <laughs> of her commitment. The age row, excellent. The age row, this one, the age row. She has graduated now. But there were back end of what she was doing. Every chapel scrubbing, not less than 50,000. From her own allowance, she'll bring it, sir. This, this is just my little for chapel scrubbing. Send it to a counter. Let them use it. So all the people chopping and doing and all that during chapel scrubbing, somebody was paying the bill. Kingdom investment, your cloud. And she never stopped. She graduated. There are people who carry envelopes. All the envelopes you are using here. All the envelopes you are using. There are people who were responsible for it. So the moment you are dropping your envelope, you are dropping their offering too. Because they were the one responsible for it. If your cloud be filled with rain, they empty themselves. I may not know what you are doing. But listen to me. It's important to know what brought you. Ejiro was the same girl that said I was, uh, I was what, what, what is it called? She said she wrote jam five times. Then she read Born to Win. Then she came and she had first class GPA. And parents surprised her with a trip to Dubai after she graduated. The day she texted me, they said, sir, you know what? When I got home, my parents just said I should go to Dubai. I said, girl, enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy. Why wouldn't she enjoy herself? Just what? You can be angry and knock your head on the air anyway. Yeah, it doesn't, do it doesn't do her nothing. I can say it now because she's, grad, she's a graduate. It doesn't do her anything. But she was on the back end. You see, you better understand the back end of what makes things to work for people. Look. There are some young individuals there who are committed to praying advancement of the kingdom consistently so. There are those who are sowing seeds. There are those who are tirelessly. So when you see people going ahead, there's something at the back of it. Nothing happens by chance, sir. Excuse me. If you complain about Bishop David Duedepo, God, God can enjoy you. I'm telling you, sir, God can enjoy you. Does he collect anything from Covenant University? Zero, sir. Does he collect anything from the church? Zero, sir. I mean completely zero. Since 1987, God's servant has not collected one salary from the church. One. 87. He is 100% sold out to God. Now, you see, when we say, <laughs> you know, some that God will help us. I've not reached that one. <laughs> so, you know, we are still growing. But these men have entered some dimension. Now, had Bishop Densi in the house had this covenant with God. It was 90 to God, 10 to himself. How many of us are aware of that story? 90 to God. I think you are hearing me. You know, you have, uh, okay, we just, 
Holy Ghost just moved me. I just committed. No, that's is still elementary level. When you get to the point where all, that's the point our father in the faith, all. Guess what he told God? Lord, let me build 1,000 churches. I don't know how many hundreds that they have built now. Let me tell you one secret that nobody told me, but you know, when I watch God's servant, I, 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 I observe. My observation is very keen because I want to, I've, what one of the things God brought me here for is to observe this man and observe what, how is he kicking the ball that is scoring goals. This 40th anniversary opened me up to the dimensions of the seeds. His, his cloud is just falling. The rain is just falling torrently. They fall this way, fall this way. I read the testimony just this morning. One of the sons of the faith, that's Pastor Corrie Komaya. God told him, 16 million naira under car. 2019 series. At the beginning of this year, he was praying a prayer. Lord, how would I bust forth? Mm, God said, you want to know? He said, bam. Number one, it was the five million he wanted to give to his wife. God said, kingdom. Then the car that he had, 16 million. God said, bring it to Canaan land. Give it to your father. He testified that, it was in Koza, he testified. He said, the dimensions of blessing he has seen this year, between January and this year, they are mind-boggling. So that man, and what is he doing with it? How many of you know that daddy does not have a house in town here? <laughs> town, town, Lagos here, house in town. No. In town in Lagos, he doesn't have one. I'm not sure if he has any one other one in Nigeria here. They have given him plenty, but he has not reached one to even say, how is the house looking like? It's completely sold out to God. The day he read, many of you have read that, that testimony. The day he read that, that's why I knew. That's why I'm under, I understood the testimony of Archbishop. But he went beyond Archbishop to give God everything. That's why covenant name will not change. So, you guys are upcoming businessmen. That is why William Colgate's name. And after 164 years still existing. And Colgate family product is not dead. Many of you want to be entrepreneurs, but you don't know the crucible of the secret that makes men sustainable forever. Those are the things I'm sharing with you now. Colgate and Palmolive. So it's not only church. So because if somebody says, okay, it's church, it's church. No, no, Colgate. How? What was the secret of Colgate? He started tithing with 10%. Then he went to 20, then went to 30, then went to 40, then went to 50. Sponsoring the spread of the gospel across the nations of the earth. Then come and see change. 165 years and Colgate and Palmolive Company have kept that secret of consistency. And that's why God has kept his covenant of sustaining that company. So those of you who have startup, Hebron Startup Lab. That's good. Find out what Hebron ought to do. Hebron is a bad place of giants. But those giants must be rooted in covenant principles. That's why you find, he said, through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's why Israel is blessed today. You are the spiritual Israel, sir. There are great ideas that is brewing in quite a number of you. But do you know what? What will create the sustainability of those ideas till Jesus comes is the thing I'm telling you today. Can I hear an amen there? The moment you can get this, sir, the dimensions of your life will break through to another level. You can't see a dry moment in your career. You can't see a dry moment in your academics. You can't see a dry moment. Listen. This institution is a dress rehearsal of what is going to happen out there. If under this seemingly environment, you can't make progress, then what will you make progress in that harsh environment out there? Environment out there is harsh. It's harsh. It's harsh. It's harsh. It's harsh. It's harsh. For a woman to survive, it's harsh. For a man to survive, it's harsh. 
But you see, men have known how to ride upon the wings of eagles. And if you are truly an eagle made by God, the storms are what makes you rise. When the eagle sees storms, they don't wear, they just only flap their wings. And when the storm, and the storm is going, they are going higher. I pray that you will truly be an eagle. Amen. That when the storms of life come, you'll be soaring higher. Amen. Let me hear a believing amen from someone. Amen. And in case you choose to be a vulture, good luck. You eat dead meat. So it's all a, it's all a choice. Are you an eagle? If you are truly an eagle, find out. In fact, how many of you have studied the characteristic of an eagle before? Let me ask. Ye. Yeah. How many of you have studied the characteristics of an eagle before? Assignment for three to five hundred level. Assignment that I'm giving you assignment. Study the characteristics of an eagle. Now, do you know what? Do you know that everything on this ground has meaning? I knew some of the meaning of your hostel. It was when Dr. Azu was saying, do you know this, 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 um, what do you call it? This chapel marks the number D. Did you see that it looks like D? Then moreover, it shows a crown. This, this place is to bring a crown. It's the crown of Solomon. The design of this building is a crown. Now watch it. Some of you who are architects, go and look at the area view of Covenant University. It speaks scriptures. <laughs> the area, we go and check, the area view of Covenant University speaks scriptures. This chapel is a crown. That's why those who honor this place, they are crowned. Those who dishonor this place, they lose their crown. Check your hostel. They, they are evidently showing the Star of David, the five candles, that's the fact, is the hostel. This is uh, Paul, Peter, Paul, Peter, Esther, and John. They are the candlestick. That's why it goes like, like that. <laughs> Not one thing that didn't have meaning on this ground. In fact, somebody said one day, God's servant will never do anything that he doesn't have a scriptural backing to do it. You know, that's why I was sharing with you. I'm trying to entrench the fact of you don't just do things. You don't just bring ideas in this school. Anything that cannot be sustained forever as God has given the pattern, don't near it. Because the God that instituted this place knew whatever he's doing there. In fact, I saw the new ark now and the faith tabernacle. It's like the faith tabernacle is carrying the ark by the design. The ark is just in front of the cave faith tabernacle. Everything has a meaning. I pray that the wisdom of God, is somebody getting something in this service? <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm sharing with you some dangerous secrets. If you get this one, you are true, sir. If you get this one, you are good enough as graduating. Because these are the secrets that makes for advancement, consistent reign. Don't be careless on this ground because this is not a careless ground, sir. Everything here is intentional. I mean intentional. May the Lord give us understanding. Let's close. I've tried. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Does somebody get the secret? Of consistency now? Does somebody get the secret of consistency now? The moment you can get that done, fill your cloud and the rain will fall. I believe that's the wisdom that God wants to release to you this morning. If that is released to you, then you are true. The anointing is going to come this morning very briefly. The anointing is to break yokes. And that anointing is to bring refreshing in your life. And that anointing is to bring healing 
Is any sick among you? Let him call to the elders of the church. So if there be any sickness or disease around anybody here, the yokes will be broken. Oh, let me hear a believing amen then. Come on, let me hear a believing amen then. The wisdom that makes for high flyers is the wisdom that makes for consistency. And the wisdom that makes for high flyers is the wisdom that makes for anointed men and women. There's an anointing within. There's an anointing upon. Now listen. What brings the anointing within is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. You need the anointing within to direct you. You need the anointing upon to enable you. You need an enablement of the anointing because of his help to enable you to accomplish your task. To break the yoke of sickness and disease that is upon your life. He said, wait in Jerusalem till you be endued with the anointing, with the power of God from on high. Then you have the capacity to be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So this morning, may the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon you. Let me hear a believing amen there. Everybody rise up on your feet. How many have learned something here? How many got something here? How many have secret, the wisdom to make them consistent high flyers all their life? How many wrote down what I told them? <laughs> Let me tell you. Some of these things that you have learned. I'm not sure you have, uh, maybe you have heard this one, you have not heard it. You have not heard it before. <laughs> Maybe God brought you here today. The secret of consistency. You know, we have not let, me too, we all let it yesterday. Is that not so? And we just, so I'm, I'm sharing with you. Through thy light, we have seen light. This norm, if I feel listen to today's message now, that is still said this thing in the church. Because it may never come here to say this, except it's led by the Holy Ghost, but that is why we are here. When the God sends the bread, then we now carry it and redistribute. So you know what I'm doing now? I only carry the bread to come and give to you. These things that I have said, many of you don't have jack. You don't know anything about it. Me too have been taught and we are teaching you. There are some that what you have heard now is what you will use to teach your colleagues because when they were supposed to hear, they did not hear. <laughs> you know, some people will teach their colleagues because when they were supposed to hear, like they are here now, they did not hear. They were joking. By the time some of you now begin to trade with these secrets, the others say, oh boy, where you learn this thing? You say, ah. But they taught us in school and I say, ah, forget that thing, forget that thing. What is that you say? Where did they teach us in school? They didn't remember because they didn't pay attention. But somebody is attentive now and that is the height of greater glory. Raise your hand to Jesus. I pray that the wisdom of God that has been shared with you today will consistently make you a high flyer. In your academics, you will never retrogress. In the works of your hands, you will never retrogress. In all that you do, God's healing and grace will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today, I decree that it shall be progress for you. Amen. This anointing this morning will shatter every yoke. We destroy everybody. And make you free in Jesus' name.